Hello, and welcome to Your Favorite Book. I'm Tanner. I'm Mallory. We are siblings. And we love books. And on today's episode, we read A Tale of Despero. A Tale? The Tale. The Tale of Despero. Off to a good start. <laughs> and who's this pie? Kate DeCamelo. Kate DeCamelo. Kate DeCamelo. De- 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 we don't have it with us. We don't us. have a copy. There's one somewhere in our house. This is highly embarrassing. This book we read when we were very young. Mm-hmm. I don't have very strong memories of it. I just remember liking it a mm-hmm. lot. Maybe I was a bit too old for it because oh. it is a bit of a younger book. For sure. It kind of feels similar to the Dragon Rider book that we read. Yeah, middle um, grade. I think I, it's even younger than I think Dragon it's, Rider. I think it's younger than Dragon Rider as yeah. well. I mean, even just the chapters are short. It's, it's yeah. a chapter book. Yeah, it is. It's a chapter book. Um, I read this when I was in middle school or elementary school, I think. Yeah. It was so long ago that I can't really remember Around it. Around that age. But I remember really, really loving it because mm-hmm. I love talking rodent books. So do I. And we love them so much that we're going to do it for our next readathon. Woo-hoo! Talking rodents. Yes. Um, we such really a fun genre. It. it is. <laughs> well, it's such a weird genre that you don't really think about. But there's quite a few. There are, and they're very popular. Yeah, like we found A Tale quite of Despero, mm-hmm. Secret of Nam, yep. Red Wall, of course. I love Red Wall so yeah. much. Yeah, I'm so excited for our talking rodents. Yes. Yeah. There's a, a popular comic, and I think it's a tabletop game called Mouse, Mouse Guard, Guard by yes. David Peterson, which we grew up on. Mm-hmm. We never played the tabletop game, but we, we had the rule book. To, we tried I, to once. Yeah. I still have the rule book. That would be fun to play again, yeah. actually. Okay. Or for the first time. That'd be fun. Um, but we had the rule book when we were kids, and we would... I remember tracing over his drawings. Oh, me too. And drawing my own mouse. Me too. And oh my, I loved it so I, much. It was so the cute. The world that he built. I love talking rodents. I love, so do I. I love observing how rodents could make their own little social structure yeah. and use their own weapons and have their own houses built. And what are I their love dangers exploring like? that. Like for them, an otter is a gigantic or... monster. Yeah, yeah. Rattlesnakes, yeah, or owls. Yeah, birds of prey. Oh. The potential for world building is so great for a talking rodent yeah. book. And I think that's part of why I love it. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe for me, talking rodents is like your version of dragons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we're like doing your readathon thing and now we're doing my yes. readathon. Yes, yes. Um, but I haven't really read a ton of talking rodent books yeah. since I was a kid. Even though I grew up on Red Wall, I loved the first Red Wall book. And then I watched the PBS Kids uh animation mm-hmm. which was spectacular yeah i love matthias yeah i loved i read the secrets of nim when i was younger mm-hmm. and i loved the book and then they had the john bluth animation right it's by don him. bluth don bluth sorry. yeah um how dare you yeah sully his they name have the the rats of nim which is also really really great mm-hmm. and i loved tale of despero and i think though i think those are kind of the only ones i read yeah did Except you ever for, watch like, Feifel Goes West. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay, that's another talking mouse yeah. anime. I loved Angelina Ballerina. That was a really cute one. It was a, an... it was a an kids anime okay. TV show. The point is there's so much them. talking <laughs> rodent stuff. Um and we just wanted to do a read I think it was actually inspired by Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke, mm-hmm. which is a book that we did during our Dragon Rider series. There are like a couple of talking rodents in that. Yeah. But they don't play a huge role in the story. I remember you and I both being like, oh, I, I thought it would be about the rat. <laughs> I know. I want, I want like Cornelia Funke to write a s- strictly talking mice yes. books. And yeah. I don't know if they have. Maybe they have and we just yeah. don't know about it. That would be amazing. But I would love that because mm-hmm. we loved Dragon Rider so much. Mm-hmm. And Tale of Despero does feel very similar. It does. Yeah. Um, in terms of tone. Mm-hmm. But Dragon Rider is much bigger uh, scope wise. Yes. Yes, it's for sure for an older audience. Yeah. So very briefly, it's, it should take only like a couple of seconds to describe what the tale of Despero yeah, is. Yeah, it's but pretty what's popular. The story? Um, it follows Despero, who's a mouse who lives in a castle. He's the smallest, tiniest He's mouse. The smallest, tiniest He's mouse the with youngest. the biggest ears. Yeah. And he doesn't fit in because he likes to read and he likes stories and he likes observing humans and he just doesn't fit in. And he mm-hmm. gets outcast because of that. And he gets sent to the dungeons with the, mi- with the rats. and Because he spoke to a human. Yeah, because he spoke to a human. His own family betrays him. <laughs> yes, yeah. And he. then we pick up another part of a story about a servant girl. And we also pick up a story about the princess. 
And all of these stories kind of converge at the end to make sense all together. Yeah. It's it's kind of it's easy to explain, but there's a lot of intricacies that happen inside of it. Sure. It's a story about Despero saving the princess. Yeah. Right? The princess gets captured. So it's like a typical fairy tale, but instead of the knight in shining, knight shining armor. armor, it's a mouse. Yeah. Which is so cute. <laughs> it's very cute. Most of this story is cute. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very well done. Yeah. I think as an older reader, I can appreciate it for what it is, but it isn't my cup of tea. For sure. Yeah. Which is what makes Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke so unique. Because I love that book even as an adult. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because it's just bigger. Yeah. It's more epic. There's more to hold on to and more to think about. Yeah. There's more world building. There's Mm -hmm. more characters. There's more plot. Yeah. Um, It does read a little bit older. There's a bit more action. Although it does feel like middle grade action. Yeah, it does. Like Tale of Despero feels like a a fairy tale Mm -hmm. that teaches very important lessons to children about empathy yeah being a good person yeah treating others with kindness and respect yeah and being able to find bravery in yourself even if you're afraid yeah and i think that is a, going to be a core trope of the talking mouse yes. genre yeah yeah it's it's exciting to see an underdog hero that is so 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 small how on earth could they do it and they're so afraid and they find a way yeah while embracing themselves you know sometimes You get that trope and people are like, oh, I'll just change everything about myself and become a new person. And that's how I become a hero. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. No, I don't either. I like when a character uses the tools that they've been given to overcome Mm -hmm. impossible odds. Yeah. Seemingly impossible odds. Um, And that's what Despero does. Mm -hmm. Uh, Despero, he, his family disregards him very early Mm -hmm. as like, he's a weirdo and an outcast because he's. Reading this book and all the mice like, you got to eat the frilly edges of the book. It's delicious. Uh-huh. But he likes to, to, to read. read instead. Um, he's a very intelligent boy. Mm-hmm. There isn't a ton of character development. Like I said, it's more like a fairy tale. Yeah. Where it's like, here are the things that happen. It's not much deeper than that. But yeah. there are some lessons that we learned that actually gave me chills. Mm-hmm. Um, not in like, oh, this is such a one of my favorite books type of way. Yeah. But like, wow, it really it's, hits you emotionally. Yeah, it's really well done. And I think it's because it has a good foundation and the characters go through arcs. Mm-hmm. It's not very deep, but Despero goes from being banished from his family. Mm-hmm. He's betrayed by his mother and his father. Mm-hmm. They have this Rat- ritual. Mouse council. Mm-hmm. A mouse council. After Despero, he hangs out with the princess P mm-hmm. and he falls in love with her right away. Yeah, it's so cute. And they hang out and play music together. Uh-huh. And then his brother sees Despero spending Sitting time with the Sitting by the hand of the king, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He tattles on Despero, his brother's um, a little D-bag. Mm-hmm. Um, and then his family is like, well, <laughs> sorry, Despero. I guess that's we got it. Sentence. We um, have to execute You're going to you. go get eaten by rats. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty dark, actually. Well, I really enjoyed Despero's mother. Mm-hmm. Her character was so silly and fun and, like, just... They really captured the caricature of this, like, she's French mouse. And she's, she's like, oh, 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 my baby boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me put my mascara on so I can cry it off while you leave. I yes. thought it was very fun. And it felt very performative. <laughs> yes. From mm-hmm. her. I think that's the point. Yeah, it was um, fun. There are some nice comic relief characters. All the bad guys are comic relief. Yeah. And I wonder if that's just a middle grade thing. Where Probably. it's like, let's it's make the bad guys thing. scary, but not too scary. Mm-hmm. Because they do that in Dragon Rider too, mm-hmm. where the main bad guy, oh, uh, Nettle Brand, yes, mm-hmm. who I love. Yeah. He's a very funny character. Yeah, too. it's kind of similar to the Tom and Jerry of it all, where <laughs> Tom tries to kill Jerry. Yeah. And then and he gets hit himself, hips himself in the face. Like, it's it's funny. Yeah, it, it is. It believes the humor of you're trying to kill the other person. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um so maybe that is just a middle grade thing. Mm-hmm. But it's present in this book, yeah. too. Like, even his, maybe his mom being, like, really playing Frivolous. up. In, uh-huh. You know, the role of, like, oh, my youngest son is dying. My poorest baby mouse. But uh-huh. she doesn't do anything to stop. It. Yeah. <laughs> like, the the author very clearly points out that, how would it feel if your mother betrayed you? But when you were being sent to the dungeons, she didn't, like, do everything to stop you. Yeah. Or to stop that from happening. Yeah. Like, She really speaks to the reader breaking the fourth wall and saying, I want you to feel this way about what's happening. Yeah. And that's part of what makes it feel very young. Yeah. It drove me away from the book as an older reader. 
Where it, yeah, I can definitely understand that. Yeah. But um, I could see how it would be very impactful for a younger person. Yeah, it's kind of helpful. It, it kind of feels to me like the author is reading the book aloud to you. And yeah. is like, oh, by the way, this, 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 this. I thought it was fun and endearing. I don't know why I love it so much when the two words, dear reader, are in a book. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy it. I love it so much. I love that breaking yeah. of the fourth wall and that connection between the author and the reader. And I mean, it doesn't fit stylistically with a lot of books, but when it does fit within the style, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's perfect for a middle grade fairy tale mm -hmm. fantasy. Um, the tone of this book, I really loved. Mm -hmm. It's lighthearted, humorous. It's heartfelt. Mm -hmm. Like you love Despero and all he wants is to fall in love with the princess. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't even want to be a knight in shining army man. A knight in shining armor, necessarily. Mm -hmm. He just wants to fall in love. Yeah. It's really cute, but it's also dark. Yeah. Um, which, for me as a kid, I think that's probably what I remembered the most, mm -hmm. um, is that unique contrast between those two emotions that work really well. Mm -hmm. Those like, two tones. Yeah, like when he gets sent to the dungeon and he's so, so, so scared, you're like, whoa, this it's is so interesting. Scary. And you can feel how much despair Despero's feeling and how dark it is and... I really love that too. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to get to experience both of those things because I think a lot of younger, younger um, middle grade um, stuff and chapter books like that kind of shy away from those darker yeah. sides and darker tones. So it's, it's exciting for the author to shameless be, shamelessly be like, let's explore this. Because it life would be is scary. terrifying. Yeah. And you can still be okay through it being terrifying. Yeah. That's probably why. I remember this book, mm -hmm. like among all the other middle grade books that I read, is because it felt like it was telling me the truth about what life is like. Yeah. How things can be really scary. Um, I did genuinely feel as I was reading this book, like I was in Despero's footsteps mm -hmm. when his family betrays him and he is sent to yeah. the dungeons all alone. It breaks your heart. It does. Um but yeah, like you said, the point of the story is to like not shy away from those scary things, mm -hmm. but to tell the reader. And you feel like you have a lot of trust in the story because it's told from like the author's point yeah. of view, basically. Yeah. Of like, it's going to get really scary, but don't worry. Hang on. Yeah. This bro will be just fine. Yeah. Um, but without, but it doesn't like take the stakes away from the story. Mm -mm. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not like. She doesn't be like, oh, and then it got scary, but he was fine the whole time. Don't worry, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Yeah. It's just that you have so much trust, like you're saying, in the author, that the author would be like, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does feel reassuring. Mm -hmm. um, there are, you mentioned this earlier, but there are themes that are set up at the beginning of the book that are paid off really well at the end. Mm -hmm. Um Everything about this book does feel like it was planned and thought through. Mm -hmm. Part of it is because it's so small. Yes. Yeah. It's very effective. To me, it felt like I was kind of reading a play. And I wonder if yeah. this could be a play. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Especially the way that the author has structured the story. It's even separated in acts mm -hmm. a little bit. And I can definitely see that. That makes sense. Yeah. I thought it would be like a fun musical. I wanted some songs in this yeah, book. Yeah, that would be cute. Because there really isn't a ton that haps in, happens in terms of plot. No. Like there isn't much of an adventure. Like, and it's very short too. It's very short. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, I'm going to give you a fairy tale very simply. Despero is the prince that saves the princess. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to get some background on the villains of the piece, which I appreciated as yeah. well. Um but the way that Despero saves the princess, not super exciting. No. Not a Red Wall style of action scene at the end. Yeah. Where it's Matthias dueling against an evil rat with uh -huh. his needle thread sword. Yeah. Despero's kind of like, look at the sunshine. Yeah. And then the rat's like, oh, I just I do want like to be sunshine. forgiven. I just want to be loved. Which is cute and sweet. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's not as exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so as an older reader, I wanted like, I need some music or some mm -hmm. character development. Or some, more of an adventure. Yeah, or a better subplot. <laughs> yeah. Or I actually, I think the subplot was equally as interesting, yeah. I mean, just personally, as mm -hmm. the main plot. Because there's not much that happens in the main plot. No, there isn't. And the subplot is a fun way to describe and understand the villain's motives. Yeah. And how another, another important part about this book, and the author has a couple paragraphs about that. 
which is cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And she's saying like, dear reader, without the initial birth of Despero, none of this would happen. Mm -hmm. Like, here's your butterfly effect of this led to this, which led to this, which led to this, which led to this, which I really enjoyed that. And it was interesting, like, as a younger reader, being able to have someone explain that to me, I'd be like, oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. You have an effect in the world. Even as an adult, it feels satisfying to read about, like, um, Despero was sent away to the dungeons at this time. Meanwhile, let's go back in time to the villain rat, Roscuro. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the names in this book, yeah. by the way. Jeez, they feel so lyrical and beautiful. And they mm-hmm. feel like they tell you so much about the character. Mm-hmm. Like Despero, his name means despair in French. Yeah. Um, which is so heartbreaking. <laughs> yes. But like having a name that speaks to your character's misbelief or theme is mm-hmm. so powerful. And we loved that about the Assassin's Apprentice, too. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's fits. interesting. Yes, there's a purpose behind his yeah. name. Um, it's tiny details like that go a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, this book is basically what I really appreciate in the story is a very consistent script where it's like you were saying. She even thought of like Despero, the name. What does it mean? Uh-huh. And it speaks to his journey and the lesson that he learns along the way, which is yeah, you can be hurt by people that love you that you love mm-hmm. very very badly, but you can still forgive them, and it's not for them, but it's for you. Yeah, right. And the way that's told is very satisfying Mm -hmm. Um, because she set up all those pieces in the first place Mm -hmm. and when it's finally paid off yeah it's very satisfying it's great i that's one of my favorite things that happens in media and it doesn't always happen as satisfying or as effective as i want it to Mm -hmm. and this this book knocked that out of the park yes like there wasn't Sometimes you get to the end of the book and you're like, okay, that was good. But what about this other comment that you had forever ago about the world building nowhere. that didn't have anything to do with anything? Yeah. Everything in this gets perfectly packaged together. And I really enjoyed that. Like mm-hmm. that cause and effect. They're like, oh, because Despero went to the dungeon, this rat got out and then this rat got caught. And then Soup got banned and because Soup got banned. Like, mm-hmm. it's just so fun. Yeah. All of those plot devices play a role in the story. You think like... So the um, princess, Princess P, mm-hmm. her mother is killed when she's eating soup. And the she gets queen frightened loves to soup. death. <laughs> she gets frightened to death because Roscuro, the villain rat, falls mm-hmm. into her soup from the chandelier. Yeah. She dies. Yeah. And so the king bans soup. And all pans, bowls, all and, spoons. Bowl and spoons. <laughs> yeah, which is really <laughs> it's so fun. very fun. <laughs> but there is a purpose behind it. Roscuro, mm-hmm. he wears a spoon as a crown, mm-hmm. this banned item. Um, it's just a nice little detail that, yeah. that the author considers. And later on, at the end of the story, um, Despero drinks some soup from the chef. He smells like the same soup that Roscuro fell into mm-hmm. when he killed the queen. That was the event that made him <laughs> the, the antagonist of the piece. Yeah. And Roscuro's like, I smell that soup. I want to be a good guy again, yeah. and I want to be forgiven, right? So that teeny tiny detail that feels really goofy, like the king bans all the soup, uh-huh. it actually, there's a point to it. Yes. Right, so that's part of really trusting your author as well, mm-hmm. where you're paying attention to every single word because you never know when a seemingly unimportant detail might yeah. play a role in the story later on. Yeah, and that has such a big role in whether or not you can keep your audience captivated. Yeah. She trains you from the first page to listen because... She's like, this will pay off. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. I got you. Keep on listening. Keep on. Keep yeah. focus. Versus sometimes if you read an author who throws in a whole bunch of stuff and it doesn't get resolved satisfactorily, so you're kind stories. of like, I'm just going to burn through the rest of this book yeah. if I even finish it at all. Because yeah. it doesn't feel like it matters. Reading right. it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's probably the biggest issue that I have with most books. Mm-hmm. And I think it comes from... Well, misunderstanding that basic fundamental of storytelling, I think the term is Chekhov's gun. It's like if you have a gun in the first yeah. scene, you have to use it in the second or third scene, right? Yeah. Um, setups and payoffs, just like a Heaps good joke. Heaps and triggers. Heaps and triggers, mm-hmm. which is a script writing term that I just learned today. Yeah. So is Chekhov's gun, though. Oh, I think it's a stage play term. Or maybe it's from Star Trek. I can't uh, remember. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, what was it's it saying? It's a play. Anton Chekhov is a playwright. Okay, I don't know anything about plays. I just know you're into plays in every yeah. book we read that I'm like, this should be a play, right? Because I'm like trying to make, become friends with you. 
Um, yeah, we're not friends. Yes. This is the deep dish. <laughs> Actually, I'm trying to m- manipulate you. Oh, there you go. You're doing great. I didn't yes. even notice. I'm trying to convince you that, oh, I actually do like plays. I think about them all the time. <laughs> and really, I don't. Um, I forgot what I was talking I'm about. I'm so sorry. I got distracted because we talked about plays. Oh, I remember. It was um, Scope, right? Yeah. So yeah. that basic fundamental storytelling of Chekhov's gun, it's, it's present in a really small middle grade book like Tale of Despero, and it makes it so that an adult can enjoy it. Yeah, and the the best best example of that I think is the red thread that is given to Despero to signal his like banishment and mm-hmm. him being sent down to the dungeon, and he goes back and gets that original spool of red thread to save the day at the end. Yeah, which is a good example of Chekhov's gun. Absolutely, and it happens again and again and again. A lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um. It's very well done. Like, there are big, epic fantasies that I cannot stand because they bring up details at the beginning of the book that mean nothing. Mm-hmm. And it makes it, it feel like I've wasted my time yeah, with that story. Yeah, it's not important. <laughs> so I think that is the biggest lesson the author should learn from something like Tale of Despero. Yeah. Is like, reduce your scope. Reduce, reduce, reduce. We say that all the time. Yeah. That was our issue with... It's my issue with most A books. lot of things. That was my issue with... The um, Hunger Games? No, Throne of Glass. Throne of Glass. Hunger Games is great. Very small. Yes. Um, the Throne sequels of Glass to Hunger to Games. Take notes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like Mocking Jays especially really mm-hmm. bothered me um, because the scope was too big. Yeah. But um, look to Tale of Despero. It's a short read, mm-hmm. but it will remind you oh, okay, you need to uh, pay off the things that you established in the beginning of the book. Yeah. Right? So, one other thing that they established at the beginning of Tale of Despero is that Despero loves to read. Mm hmm. So he finds this book, he reads it about a knight in shining armor saving this princess. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, oh, that's cute. He can read books. Yeah. That'll never come up again. Uh Uh-huh. But it does. Mm -hmm. Because Despero, at his darkest moment, it follows the hero's journey, very simply. Yeah. He's sent to the dungeon. He's um, brought back up incidentally. And the chef tries to kill him, chops him tries to kill him with a knife, chops Mm -hmm. off his tail, which is like, that happens in a children's book? (laughs) Yeah. Jeez. And then he passes out somehow. He, he falls unconscious and he mm-hmm. has a dream about the knight from the book. And he says, you know who I am, the, the knight. And he takes off his helmet and there's no one underneath it. Mm-hmm. And Despero's like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. And then later on in the story, Despero, he overcomes his fear after the princess is kidnapped. And he's like, I'm too scared to go in the rat dungeon again. Mm-hmm. And then he thinks of that dream and he says, oh, you know who I am. I was the knight all it along. It was for me. I'm supposed to fulfill the armor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a very simple character arc. But yeah. even talking about it now gives me chills. Yeah. And another great example is the same thing. But when he's stuck in the dungeon, the jailer's like, ah, I'm going to eat you. And mm-hmm. he's like. Oh. The human jailer. Yeah. The human jailer's like, all, all, all mice come here to die. And Despero starts talking to him. And he's like, oh, you're different. What? And Despero's like, why? What makes me different? And he's like. You can tell me stories. Mm. And he tells the jailer all these stories that he's read. And that's what keeps him living and saves his life, too. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thread. Yeah, absolutely. Where it's like they didn't bring up him being able to read stories for no reason. Mm -hmm. He uses that skill. And it comes back to him in handy to help him overcome challenges. And it makes him special, too. It makes him unique. Yes. It's a nice little Mm meta-narrative where it's like, even as a kid, you don't realize that the story you're reading right now, even though the author does point it out, Uh is like, you're supposed to use this story later on in your life to overcome obstacles. Yeah. And I don't know if specifically in my life, after reading The Tale of Despero, I was like scared to go into junior high. Yeah. And I thought of Despero, who was really brave. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I had any specific examples <laughs> like that. Yeah. But I'm sure it informed my subconscious. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Definitely. So that's part of also what makes this such a powerful story. Mm-hmm. Is the reader makes sure not just to tell you because it's being told like, She's narrating the story to you, but the story itself is supposed to reassure you. Yeah. That, like, you can overcome these obstacles. It's great. Yeah. It's why I love all talking rodent shows and, t- and, and, and books. books and stories. It just seems like the common thread of all of them is you're braver than you realize. It's about courage. It's so sweet. Yeah. It just makes my heart so warm and happy. And also, I just love mice. So do I. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. they're very cute. My nickname is Mouse, so. That's true. Um, should we talk about the bad guys? Yes. So, Roscuro, he's an evil rat. Mm-hmm. And he loves to see the, the light. And it is written 
very similar to Dragon Rider mm-hmm. by Cornelia Fuente, omniscient third person, where we jump from the tale of Despero and we talk about the villains and mm-hmm. their origin story to mm-hmm. explain their motivations. Yeah. Is the other, is the woman's name Mags? Mig? Mig. I think. Mig. M-I-G. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's another one of the villains. She's a young girl who grew up in the town, in the castle's area. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what. In the village. Yeah. In the village. And we get some of her backstory too, where she grew up with parents who didn't really like her. And her dad even sold her for a, a tablecloth, a red tablecloth. Yeah. And some Something food. Else. Yeah. I think some food. Either way. And she gets sold to another man who she calls him uncle. And she gets beat. And she's sad. And Her she, life is horrible. Her life is horrible. And one day she sees the princess mm-hmm. on her tippy-toed pony. Which I loved the description of her horse. Of how mm-hmm. even her horse was hoity-toity. And she was like... I want to be that one day. I'm going to be a princess. And the princess and her father were coming to come and get all of the soup utensils because it was banned. And we see Minx as she slowly works her way up and becomes a servant for the... Princess P. P. Yeah, Princess P. And she works with Roscuro to kidnap the princess so that she can hopefully become the new princess. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Roscuro is also established as like the very stereotypical evil rat in a yeah. talking mouse story. Um, and I was very pleased that at the end he was redeemed. Yeah. Because it does bother me in fantasy books where it's like orcs, they're always bad because they were born evil, mm-hmm. even though they're equally as intelligent as humans yep. and other good races. They're all just bad. Yeah. Which I was afraid of this book making that mistake, but it mm-hmm. doesn't. Um, but Roscuro is raised believing that rats are conniving and evil and cunning. Mm-hmm. And they have to take advantage of people. And we even get um, dialogue between Roscuro and his mentor, his rat mentor. Mm-hmm. Like, this is how you take advantage of people. Yeah. You tell them what they want to hear, and then you take it away from them. And then you can physically torch the, torture them. Yeah. It's very fun yeah. when you get to do that. <laughs> it's really fun dialogue. It is fun. And it's also fun because the whole time Roscuro is like, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I was looking at the dappled sunlight as it yeah. falls through the dust. So the light to him, <laughs> he just loves light. And I think to him it represents like overcoming your social status. Yeah. Where it's like you were born a rat. Nope, you can't go above that. Mm-hmm. You have to stay in the darkness and be a, an evil person. Yeah. So Roscuro believes, no, I'm meant for more than that. Mm-hmm. I want to be in this other, I want to be living happy with the humans, right? <laughs> yeah. So he's swinging on a chandelier, Roscuro, in the, party. Mm-hmm. in the party. He he lands into the queen's soup, kills the queen, and then Princess P gives him this look like, you are the evil rat that killed my mother. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes Roscuro yep. evil. <laughs> oh, the king also bans rats along with soups and bowls and spoons. Yes. It's so silly. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's where like the middle grade stuff comes into play, where it's like, that's what made Roscuro decide to become evil because the princess gave him a dirty look. Uh-huh. It's like, really? Yeah. But it's, I get it. I can look past <laughs> that. It makes enough sense for a middle grade yeah. book. Where it's like, I just was, I need my villain. Um, so Roscuro, he is able to manipulate Meg because Meg is horrible at her job. She also, this is, this was also another like dark, dark, dark tone that mm-hmm. I was surprised was in this book where she's been beaten by her uncle so many times that she has cauliflower Everyone ears. Everyone beats her. Even like, like the cook beats yeah, her. Yeah. It's sad. It's horrible. And she sad. can't hear anymore. Like it was really sad. I was like, oh. Yeah. Okay. They, again, I think we're lightening up the tone by like making her a bit of a comic relief. Yeah. It's like Mig is kind of dumb. I was like, oh, I don't know if you should. Mig- I get the point. Yeah. What you're trying to do. Yeah. But it feels bad making her like this tragic character who's also really stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, make her bright, intelligent. It would be fun if she was maybe pretending to be stupid and it was all part yeah. of her plan the whole time or something. I don't know. There's like another angle. You can still make her funny to like try and lighten up her yeah. tragic story mm-hmm. um, without, you know. Making her an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Because it was just, it kind of felt unfair. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's a tiny gripe. Yeah. Mig, she is the maid servant to Princess P, but she's so bad that she's eventually downgraded <laughs> all the way to, well, now you got to be the maid servant to the jailer. Underground. Yeah. So that's where Mig and Roscuro meet, and they conspire together to capture Princess P. Mm-hmm. They capture her, bring her to the dungeon, and then that's when 
Um, Despero has his moment of heroism. He goes to the dungeon to save Princess P. Mm-hmm. Um, he smells of soup because he eats it with the chef. And then... That inspires Roscuro to... Not be bad Forgive anymore. and forget. Yeah. And then the, it's a happily ever after. Oh, and Princess P um, is kind to Migs. And so Migs yes. is like, oh, okay, I won't try to kill you then. Yeah. Which is another middle grade kind of thing. Young yeah. audience thing. But what I love about this book is that every character has their own little arc. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, Princess P, not so much. She's empathetic. She has everything she needs from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> she does. Well, there's a nice narrative parallel between Despero and Princess P, mm-hmm. where Despero, I think the message of this story is about forgiveness, personally. Yeah. You can interpret it how any other way you want. Mm-hmm. Um, but Despero forgives his father for banishing him. Yeah. Because Despero returns from the dungeons, his tail's cut off, he's got this red cape, and his father thinks that his son is a ghost. <laughs> and he's like, oh, Despero, you're dead, please forgive me. Uh-huh. And then Despero realizes, oh, forgiveness is not just for the other person Mm -hmm. because his father shows true remorse. Yeah. He stepped down as king Mm -hmm. and he got rid of the ritual of banishing mice for talking to people. Yeah. I really liked that moment too, because you kind of walk through with Despero as he processes that. He's Mm -hmm. like... Why you you threw me away, like what? And and then you you get to watch him process it and come to terms of like, oh, he's genuinely remorseful and he made a mistake and I can forgive him and move on from my own gripes that I'm holding on to. Yeah. It's really, really well done. It is. That's powerful stuff for anybody, let alone for fourth graders. Yeah, it is. Um and she doesn't make like that situation very complex. Mm-hmm. Like Despero is just a good person. Mm-hmm. But he does realize that he was fomenting some negative feelings towards his father and that forgiving him helped him let go of that. Yeah. Just super simple and mm-hmm. very effective. And it's not like this huge dramatic thing of, you cast me away, no. father. I'm never getting over it. It's not that. It's so simple. It's just nice. It's actually a really good lesson for any writer. Yeah. Where you don't have to over dramatize your scene. Mm-hmm. You can explain the conflict that both characters are going through and then just resolve it and then continue with the plot. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. Any book would be satisfying if it, if those like really important moments just happened very simply and they were explained succinctly. Mm-hmm. There's something on. there's something so lovely about it being so simple. It feels that much more tangible. Yeah, and memorable too, mm-hmm. right? Like I remember that scene forever mm-hmm. now. I mean, I didn't remember, remember it much as a kid. <laughs> it just took two times to read it. <laughs> it did. Um, but the lesson probably stuck with me as a kid. Yeah. Maybe not the specific scene, mm-hmm. right? Where, oh, forgiving people is for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, the narrative parallel between um, Despero P. and Princess P. Mm-hmm. Princess P, she's captured by Roscuro and Mig. She has empathy for Mig because she's like, ah, oh, she had this horrible life. Mm-hmm. Her mom died. Her father sold her. I understand she wants to be a princess. Yeah. Which is nice, like, just another super simple line Mm -hmm. from Princess P's perspective. Yeah. Um, And recognizing her own privilege, too. Yeah. Uh, Very uh, empathetic young lady. Mm -hmm. And she forgives Mig in that moment for what she did to her. Mm -hmm. Um, So very similar to Despero. Yeah. And then uh, later on, Roscuro, he gets his own forgiveness, too, Mm -hmm. from Princess P as well. Like, I understand that what your motivation was, you wanted to be accepted for who you are. You want to be seen as a real person, not mm-hmm. just a rat. Yeah. Um, so, Roscuro, I recognize you as like a real person, right? Yeah. Um, and he doesn't get killed, right? He's not the villain. He's not your stereotypical like middle grade villain. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, he needs to be yeah. killed to be dealt with. Yeah, and they all lived happily ever after except for the villain who got killed. Yeah. Mysteriously, he never shows up ever again. <laughs> because he was an irredeemable, dirty yeah. rat. Yeah. I That's, love that. It's so it's so nice, and you, anybody can relate to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might not have killed a whole bunch of people personally, but there's still stuff in your life that you could be like, oh, I can let go of that, mm-hmm. and I can move on and try to explore what makes me feel the most authentic and the most joyful, mm-hmm. even if you're not a rat in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, and obviously it's a lot harder to do in person. Yeah. It's like someone who has wronged me. How am I supposed to allow them to change? Mm-hmm. Because you want to see them as this bad person. It's it's um easier to empathize with a good person yeah. than with someone who's hurt you. Mm-hmm. But that's what Despero teaches you. Is that in the end, 
it is better to try and forgive that person. Yeah. Even if it's just for yourself mm -hmm. and to allow your enemies to change. Yeah. It's a beautiful message. It's powerful. And it's not told to you like, this is the lesson you're supposed to learn. I think I've tried, I think I've made it sound like that's how it's written, but it's not. Yeah. No, no. It's a lot more um, secondary. It's not like, I don't know. I don't know what the, the word I'm looking the for The story is. is shown, not told. Yes. Yes. And it's not like blatantly like, here today, dear reader, you will be learning a lesson because this is a tale that will teach you a lesson. It's not like that at all. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot more like subliminal messaging. Sure. And <laughs> the author will say things like narrating what's going to happen to Despero, where Despero reads mm -hmm. the story about the knight in shining armor overcoming these odds. And then she'll say, and I'll tell you, dear reader, that Despero was going to need that story to help him because... He was going to go through some hard times. Mm -hmm. Like that's the level of yeah. narration that's yeah. throughout the book. Um, yeah, it's just a perfectly lovely read. It was so pleasing. It was so pleasant. Yeah. To me, it feels like required reading when you're at like the exact right age. I agree. Where you're just in the middle of your childhood mm -hmm. and you're starting to grow up. And starting to learn about people and how everybody's different and... The world isn't it's black big. and white. Mm -hmm. There aren't good guys and bad guys. Yeah. Empathizing with people who do wrong things is important. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like one of my favorite messages in stories are about redemption mm -hmm. and that everyone can change. Yeah. And I, I just love when children's literature or children's fiction in general is that powerful. Mm -hmm. Like I think a lot of people discredit how much of that children can pick up. Mm -hmm. If you give it to them simply and explain it to them, they will pick it up. Yeah. The children are smart and intelligent and they're just capable, sponges. Yeah, capable of understanding that complex social relationship. And I I just love when authors or creators don't shy away from that. Mm -hmm. It's it's nice. Same here, especially middle grade authors. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's important to be upfront with children about how difficult life can be. Yeah. Because they have hard lives, too. They're just as capable of understanding those challenging emotions as mm -hmm. adults are. In fact, some kids might even better at regulating those emotions yeah. than some adults. For sure. like some, who never, And those adults were probably children who never received that training. Exactly. Like, some of my favorite books are still middle grades that deal with that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I still revisit as an adult. Yeah. I think even just talking about this book, I've... Realized how much I actually liked it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it even more than I thought I did. Yeah. Yeah, like, me too. I love Dragon Rider because mm -hmm. it's a very well-written adventure. Super fun. Bigger scope. Um, and that's what I love from a story in an entertainment point of view. Yeah. But as a piece of artwork that I can carry with me throughout my life, mm -hmm. I prefer something like Despero. Yeah. Obviously the best of both worlds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You get the entertainment and the um, emotional intelligence. Uh-huh. That Despero can teach you. Um, but I think I would prefer something like Despero if I'm going to have to choose one to read over the other. Yeah, um, I think I think I will too. I think it just is I love Dragon reduced Rider. To, to better things. Like, yeah. yeah, I love Dragon Rider too. It was so much fun. But we couldn't talk about the emotional, emotional complexities mm -hmm. of like the lessons that Ben learned. And maybe yeah. they're there and we might have missed it. Yeah. Um, but it, that's what feels, what Tale of Despero feels like to mm -hmm. me, like removing some of the adventure to distract so, so that you don't distract the reader from the message. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And if I were to give it one criticism and it's not even a fair criticism. Okay. I will give it five stars. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, I would have loved more of an adventure. Yeah. 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 I can totally understand that. It's, it's very, um, the story feels it's, like I don't. it introduces Despero. Mm -hmm. He gets betrayed by his family. He goes into the dungeon. And then let's tell the story of Roscuro, mm -hmm. Roscuro yeah. and Mig. Yeah. And then let's go back to Despero. Yeah. Oh, he leaves the dungeon. Tail gets chopped off. Has the vision of the night. Forgives his father. The princess is kidnapped. He goes to save the princess. Like it happens pretty quickly. Yeah. What I would have loved is like, I want some scenes of Despero wandering through the dungeon. Yeah, that's what I wanted too. And he's mm -hmm. learning about rat society and he meets some rat characters. He has some adventures. He grows, changes, goes through more struggles. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have loved. Yeah, more I definitely building. agree. I wanted more high stakes. Yeah. 
Yeah. But like I said, it's, it's, not, still a great. Fair, it's, it's not a fair criticism. That's just a personal taste thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would have expanded the scope mm -hmm. and it knew exactly what it was trying to be. Um, and it doesn't need to be anything more than that. Yeah. That's just personally what I look for in an entertaining <laughs> rodent book, speaking rodent book, um, mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I don't really have any notes. It was totally enjoyable and... Yeah. Is it's this... a classic for a reason. Yes, it is. And everyone knows it for a mm -hmm. reason. It deserves its accolades. Mm -hmm. Is this one of your favorite books? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Is this one of your favorite books? I think so, too. Good. After talking about it, I've realized just how much I really did love it. It helps to be able to process uh, um, auditorily or like like speak it out. <laughs> Goodness gracious, my brain is not with me today. I know today. what you mean. <laughs> it helps to verbally process yeah, your thoughts. Yeah, for sure. Because even before we started, I was like, what am I going to say about I know. this book? Yeah. It's great. Because I felt like there wasn't very much neat on this particular bone mm -hmm. but there is but it's, it's very good. short yeah. and there's a lot to learn from it I think. yeah i definitely recommend it yeah same here Gently. so thank you all for watching if you made it to the end of the video Yay. please leave a subscribe leave a subscribe <laughs> please subscribe and leave a comment leave a like it helps the channel out a lot for reaching sure out to other people let us know if you read tale of despero i feel like it's pretty popular i don't know i think and there's a good movie too for yeah. it. So Did you let have us know any if you liked about it. The book? Was there something that we missed? Yes. That you felt like we should have talked about more? Mm -hmm. um, we are going to keep doing our Talking Rodent Readathon. We'll release our calendar. Um, we're doing it a bit differently than our Dragon Rider Readathon. Mm -hmm. We're not every week we're doing a Dragon uh, Rodent book. Mm -hmm. We're doing it every other week, but we have like maybe six or seven books. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take it slower. Yeah. And enjoy all of the Talking Rodent episodes we can have. Yeah. And we might do a tier list or we might not. We don't know. Yeah. Do you want to see a rodent tier list? Yeah. Le let us uh, know. If you know of any Talking Rodent books that you want us to read, please let us know. We love them so much. We want to add more to our list. There this are time. never enough. Yeah. I agree. We need a new Talking Rodent renaissance. Yes. So someone get on that. <laughs> I'll do it. You can write a Dragon Rider Perfect. book. Perfect. And then I'll... I'll do my Talking Rodent book. Yeah, And we'll have a crossover. We'll build a multiverse. Genius. What if the mouses, the mouses are turn riding into the dragons? dragons? Oh. oh. <laughs> Two different ways. We have to trap the podcast because this is gold. This is comedy gold. Hurry. Hurry. Stop. Goodbye. <laughs>